Hello everyone and welcome to Sinful Gaming. I hope you're all doing well, I hope you're all staying safe and most of all I hope you're all fighting that war against the grey. Today we're going to be talking about some Warhammer fantasy novels that I've read, I really enjoyed and I remember back fondly. I recommend going and giving any of these novels a read um, and just so you might get some experience of what the old world was like. I mean there were some great stories that came out of that and yes it did end but these stories that still, I think, are timeless. There's some really fantastic novels and some fantastic pieces you can go back, read, and enjoy. And these are just seven stories that I recommend going back and having a read of. So let's get cracking into the list. Number one, I'm going to suggest Broken Honor by Robert L. This, for me, is a just great, fantastic Warhammer Fantasy Empire novel. So, Broken Honor is a part of, like, I guess, a sort of set of novels that were released telling stories of different parts of the Empire and their military. You've got a different few of them from Swords of Justice, Grimblades, and Warrior Priest, all focusing on different parts, but Broken Honor focuses on the free companies. So, the general story is that the armies of Hockland are at breaking point, beset on all sides by feral beastmen. The safety and prosperity of the province itself is shattered. There are desperate times, and a mercenary captain called Ericsson looks to capitalize on the conflict, buying the freedom of a group of prisoners who he then forms into a free company. This freedom, though, comes at a price for those prisoners as they're forced into battle time and time again throughout the story, and it's just a great little story, talking about this captain trying to make these, I guess, prisoners and these, uh, well, no-good people be something better and more and the story just follows this free company that just gets thrown into battle after battle horrible scene after horrible scene it's great i really do thoroughly enjoy this book i reckon it's one of my favorite warhammer fantasy books um, and i do reckon anyone goes and gives this a check out number two the defenders of ulth one and i guess it's subsequent sequel the sons of Illyrian by Graham McNeil. This is a fantastic high focus novel that focuses around the story of these two brothers who are quite at odds. Um, a bunch has happened to them in times past and over the course of their lives and this book really just sort of tells a tale of these two brothers trying to sort of forgive each other while also save their home realm of Ulthuan. This book is great. It covers a bunch of fantastic sort of main characters as well. It has I guess bits and pieces of people like King Finnebar, Prince Imric, Tyrion, Teclis, even Marathi comes up in the story now and again. There's some really cool characters within it. But the main characters are the driving force behind the story. I really like how you've got these sort of no-named characters um, sort of pushing the story forward while sort of being part of the grander story of these more major plot players within Warhammer Fantasy. It's a great series and probably my favourite lot of High Elf novels from Warhammer Fantasy Times. Graham McNeil does a really great job at just making these characters feel real and just sort of show you all these different parts. And it explores Ulthuan in different ways as well. There's some really great parts of it that just Ulthuan is shown in a different light and all these things that happen over the Elven realm. It's a really, really great novel and I recommend going and picking up the two and giving them a read to anyone. Number three, this should come as no surprise for anyone who knows what I like in Warhammer Fantasy, it was the Wood Elves, but Orion, the Vault of Winter, and all its stories that come after by Darius Hinks. I think this story really just gives a bit of light on the story of Orion and who he is as a character. I really like some of the starting scenes on how you sort of learn how Orion's made in this particular story. But in general, this story focuses on someone who has betrayed Orion and he doesn't quite feel himself throughout the stories. Um, and so it's sort of pushing towards this theme of like just trying to uncover this traitor amongst their mids and figure out exactly what has happened to Orion this time that he's been awoken. Um, for me, it's just a fun story that just sort of follows through and tells you a whole bunch about him. Um, it just shows you the Wood Elf Kingdom within Athelorn in a much more expansive way than what we've ever seen before um, in any other way, really, up until we get into some of the End Times novels. And it's just fun. It runs through, it's cool, it has lots of mystery parts, it has lots of nice fight scenes, and it's got some really good intrigue parts to it as well. A great little novel about probably my favourite character personally in the Warhammer fantasy setting. Number four, Temple of the Serpent by C.L. Werner. So this is for me the pick of the bunch out of the Thankful sort of saga that we get, though I do recommend picking up any of them, be that in Gracie, Temple of the Serpent, or the last one, Thankful's Doom, one of which sort of follow Thankful through the Warhammer fantasy setting. Thankful's a great character. I love the mischievous Ratman and everything he brings to the story. Um, Temple of the Serpent focuses on him going over to Lustria to sort some stuff out. 
Um, it pits him against the Prophet of Sotek and a bunch of other things, and it's just a fun little story. There's so much that happens within this story. Um, and for me, I think a great part of this story is the actual humans you read about. The sort of main party you follow is not actually Thankor or the Ser the Lizardmen, almost called them Seraphon there. Um, for me, it's the human party you follow and just all the story and everything you have it. There's a great little ending and a catch to the ending and it just is so scathing in how it ends. I absolutely love it. Um, this was just a great book. But like I said, the other ones in the series are just as good. Um, this is definitely a read for anyone a fan of Skaven, whether in Warhammer Fantasy or Warhammer Age of Sigma. Go and give this book a read. It's absolutely awesome. Number five, Knights of Bretonia by Anthony Reynolds. This is probably, to date, my favourite Warhammer Fantasy novel or, I guess, uh, selection of stories put together. Um, Knights of Bretonia focuses on primarily one character through Bretonia sort of going from his story of an errant knight to a questing knight to a grail knight and everything in between. It's a great story that just shows you the path that a knight has to take and go across all the the realms of Warhammer Fantasy. This takes him fighting everything from Chaos Hordes to fighting an Athaloran against Beastmen to doing a whole bunch of stuff fighting against Mullison and vampires and it is just an absolutely amazing novel. There's so much to this story and so many good bits within it that I absolutely loved it. Um, for me, yeah, like I said, this contains the story Knights Errant, Knights of the Realm, Questing Knight and Grail Knight, four different stories all in one. For me, this is my favourite Warhammer Fantasy novel I ever read. Um, absolutely love it. Anthony Reynolds did a fantastic job just showing the path that a knight has to take in Britannia. And probably making Britannia cooler than they've ever been. Um, like, if they had taken more of this in Warhammer Fantasy times, maybe Britannia might have had a better time of it. This was just great. Really showed them in a different light. Coming in at close second, we have probably my favourite story from the Time of Legends sort of group of novels and storylines that they had, and that is Blighted Empire and, I guess, The Wolf of Sigma and the other ones that follow on from this particular story. They're written by C.L. Werner, and what they tell the story of is the Empire during the time of the Black Plague. This is a time where the Black Plague wipes out, I guess, the vast majority of the Empire's population, and Skaven and Undead almost overrun them. It's a great sort of three-part story where you get to learn all these different parts about Skaven even the undead and the empire all in one i really almost liken this story to age of sigma's version of game of thrones it has so many twists and turns it's got very corrupt leaders it's got great little characters everywhere throughout the books all playing in the same little stories what this does really well is it tells you all these different little tiny stories and blends them all together really well into a fantastic set of novels that really just give you a great look at the empire during one of the worst times in its history for me, this is probably, yeah, like I said, probably the best Time of Legends saga there is. And yeah, I'm even putting that against Nagash. I reckon this is better. This is a great little story. It shows you so much of what Warhammer Fantasy is like um, in all these different parts. You get to look at Skaven, get to look at Undead, get to look at the Empire, and just does a great job showing them all and tying all their stories in together and making a great series of books. And number seven, Mollus Dark Blade by Dan Abner and Mike Lee. There's a couple of chronicles for this and there's a bunch of stories to tell, but effectively they all put together the story of Mollus Dark Blade, who is the coolest Dark Elf to have ever existed. Yep, I'm putting him above even my own personal favourite, Lockie of Felhart, and characters like Malekith Malarian or Marathi. For me, this is one of the greatest stories that we have for Warhammer Fantasy. It's right up there, I think, with my personal favourites. But I reckon this story, just what it does well is tell, sorry, a hero's tale about someone who isn't a hero. Like, Mother Starkblade is not a nice person in any way, but it makes you fall in love with this character and just does such a great job at making you feel for a Dark Elf, who is, all intents, not a great person. Mother Starkblade himself as a character is... And I guess the premise of his whole story is he made a bargain with a demon and to control it. And now the demon's trying to take over his body and has to collect these artifacts so that he doesn't get completely controlled by this demon. Um, and the story sort of goes over him collecting these artifacts. It's a great little set of stories that you can just grow on and there's just so much depth to them. It takes you all over the realms and does a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, really a great set of stories that you can read. Don't know, but Michael Lee did a fantastic job of fleshing out this really cool character. 
So there's a list of some of my personal favourites. Seven stories from Warhammer Fantasy that I fondly remember and I absolutely enjoyed. I'd love to know some of your favourites. Are there some that maybe I've missed that maybe I might not have read that I can go back and have a read? I've been really thinking about doing some more in-depth reviews to a bunch of Warhammer Fantasy novels, going back and doing, I guess, some retro reviews on Warhammer Fantasy, and they seem to be releasing some old stories like The Vampire Genevieve and all that sort of stuff back from Warhammer Fantasy Times at the moment as well. So maybe we'll get into some of those in our Black Library reviews. What do you think of that? Would you like to see Black Library reviews going back and looking at some old Warhammer Fantasy novels? We'd like to see all these ones sort of taken and talk a little bit more in depth that we've talked about in this video. But leave some comments below. Let us know what you think. Let us know some of your favorite Warhammer Fantasy novels. Love to hear from you all. Well, we hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And also, while you're at it, why don't you come join our Discord server where you can chat to me and other members of our fine little community here at Cineful Gaming. You can do so by following the link to our Discord server, which is in the description of the video. Lastly, I'd like to give a shout out to everyone who helps support the channel financially via Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you to our Patreon supporters, Christian Weir, James Soren, Chaos Spawn, AJC, Kenny Lowell, Alder and Shopfirst, James Crowder, Andrew Bowen, Nathan Fee, Tim Newman, and The Rising Ape. And thank you to our YouTube members, Green Roots Gaming and Fire Titan. Thank you all for supporting the channel, and if you'd like to help support the channel like these fine people do, you can do so by clicking one of the links down to either our Patreon or our YouTube members in the description of the video as well. Thank you all for watching everyone though, stay safe, stay well, and most of all, keep fighting that war against the grey. Ciao for now.